In our practice it, exercise 16.7, delete back, we need to write a delete back method that deletes the last value from the back of the list and returns that deleted value. If the, if the list is empty, the method should throw a no such element exception. First we can write our list. It's gonna be public int because it's returning a value and we are calling it delete back. It's not taking any parameters and we can look at our first if statement and that's if our front is equal to null in other words if our front is empty we're gonna return a throw new no such element exception close that if statement and we'll move on to an else if statement and this is if our next value is null so we only have one value in our list so we can write if front dot next is equal to null what we're going to have to do is store our value. So before we go in here, we can make a value. We can call it int value, and we'll initialize it at 0. And then in here, we'll say that our value is equal to front.data. And this gets the, the dot data gets the value at front. And then we can set our front equal to null. That way, if our list looks like this, where our one is our front value and null is our next value. We set front equal to one, and then front is now gonna be equal to null since it's asking us to delete the last value and return that deleted value. So now we're gonna have to return value like this, and we can close our else if statement. Now after we do this, we have an else statement, and this else statement is if we have more numbers in our list. So let's say we have one, two, three, four, five, etc. Well, to go through our list, we're gonna have to make a temporary list node. So we'll do that here. And we'll say that list node current is equal to front. We need to go through our list to get to our back part. So we are going to have a while loop and we're gonna do while current dot next dot next does not equal null and the reason why it's next next when we hit this value we want to examine not this value but the next value that way we don't skip over this value and we can store it and then return it so if we hit our four right here so we can really get rid of these and let's say we're at four we are just going to hit we are going to see that we have a null and we're going to break out of our while loop. Once we break out of our while loop, we're basically going to do what we did up here after it. So for one, two, and three though, we're gonna go through it. And the way we go through it is setting current equal to current dot next. After we come out of our loop, we are going to be at this part because our while loop is current dot next next is not equal to null and our next next is null. So we're gonna be at four. So we have to set our value equal to our next. And it's going to be current dot next dot data. That way we get the value at that uh, part in our list. After this, we are just going to set current dot next equal to null. And then we are going to return our value for every part in our method. Oh, and since we have this code between our if and our else if statement, this can't be an else if, it has to be an if, it has to start over. Same thing with this. If our, if we have something in between our statements, we have to have an if. So instead of having this right here, which breaks our else if, we can move this up here with this value. Also have to make sure that we have the proper brackets for all of our code. And then after we run it, we will pass all of the tests.